Trevor Benko. This is Ben Jordan. We're with TGBsupplements.com. Today we're going to do a video talking about high hematocrit levels, hemoglobin, issues with blood uh, from testosterone replacement therapy, and ways to negate them uh, and deal with the side effects. Yeah, if your guy's running heftier cycles for a longer period of time, or if you're a little bit overweight, have some water retention, that can all lead to thickness of your red blood cells. This is going to pertain to pretty much anybody using anabolic steroids, whether for just replacement purposes or for performance enhancing effects. Uh, obviously, the more you use, the more likely you're going to have issues with the uh, red blood cells elevating your hematocrit, which is like the thickness of the blood. Uh, and it usually coincides, the hematocrit usually coincides with the uh, hemoglobin. When the hemoglobin is elevated, then the hematocrit will be elevated. I believe the hematocrit is actually uh, the amount of he hemoglobin or the amount of red blood cells in the blood itself, right. I believe. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's why they kind of coincide. Uh, but anyway, if, if your levels are elevated, for guys, usually anything like over uh, 51, is typically high, even 50 is a little high. Uh, you usually want to be around like a 48, 49 if possible. Uh, I've seen guys that are just running 100 milligrams a week have issues with this, especially as you get older, it can become more of an issue. If you're overweight, sleep apnea is a big reason. Uh, I actually had sleep apnea just from my neck being thick uh, and from being on testosterone. I had to donate blood at one point because my uh, hematocrit and hemoglobin were off the charts. Uh, I was like around 55, which is pretty high for the hematocrit. Um, my hemoglobin was, I want to say it was like 18.7, which is pretty high. So I donated a pint of blood and I checked it again and I was good. I went down a good bit. I got down to like 51 and you know, it took a little while. But another big thing is when you go to get your test done, you want to make sure you're, you're well hydrated. That plays a huge role in, your, in where your blood work will show as far as uh, you know, where you're at on your hematocrit. Um, there's a few things that we'll touch on before we get into the preventative mechanisms. One, thick blood, your kidneys filters your blood. It causes kidney cell death. So that's one of the biggest problems with the elevated hematocrit. And that's big with bodybuilders. You know, that's one of the number one you know, killers. killers in bodybuilders is kidney issues. And you, know, you yeah. only have one set of kidneys, so. That combined with diuretics, that's a bad combo. Definitely. And uh, you know, also, it can raise your blood pressure because it's harder for your heart to pump, which can enlarge your heart. Uh, when your blood pressure gets elevated, that also damages <clears> your kidneys, and you know it's bad for your heart long term. That's another big issue down the road. Um, two would be people say, oh, equipoise, it causes a massive amount of increase in red blood cell production. So or equipoise and like anadrol, they might give you a little bit more. But it's nothing that's going to be huge immensely over, say, a testosterone. Yeah, they, any anabolic androgenic steroid, for the most part, will increase the amount of red blood cells being produced by your body. Uh, but each one is a little bit different, and some people may respond differently to different compounds. Some guys may not be able to use things like equipoise or anadrol. Uh, other guys may have issues with testosterone. So most guys will have a little bit of an effect from testosterone replacement therapy at some point especially if you have sleep apnea. If you snore at night and you're not sure, you know, you may have sleep apnea, it's definitely a good idea to get checked. Yep, okay. The first thing we can touch on would be like a phlebotomy, uh, donating red blood cells. Um, if you can, a double red, that will help a lot more than just a regular donation. I think they take out, what, like a pint? Yeah, pint's usually what they do. Uh, a donation is probably your best bet. You know, if they can use the blood, that's great. Uh, a lot of times if you tell them that you're using anabolic steroids, even if it's prescribed, they may not use the blood. Sometimes they won't even take your blood if your levels are too high because they'll prick your finger and they'll check and see where your levels are at. And if you're too high, they won't even take your blood. So sometimes that doesn't work. If, that, if you can't do a donation, you can get a doctor prescribed phlebotomy. You go to your doctor, especially if you're on testosterone replacement and your levels are high, you could ask your doctor to write you a script for a phlebotomy, and what they'll do is they'll just take the blood and they'll discard it after you're done. They won't use it. They'll just dispose of it. Uh, and that's what I did. Uh, also, uh, another thing that you could do would be to use uh, grapefruit seed extract. Uh, this, over time, can lower your red blood cells in your hematocrit. Uh, it takes a little bit of time though, and you must be consistent. So typically this could take up to six months to actually take effect and work. 
and it's something new. It may work for some, may not work for others, but I do know guys that have done it and it works for them. So uh, I'm trying it myself right now, so we'll see how it does for me. Isn't it supposed to, if you're elevated, it'll bring you down, or if mm -hmm. you're low, it'll bring you up to normal? Supposed to. Yeah. So that's that's the effect that you're supposed to get with it. I'm not sure exactly how that works. I'm not even sure if it's understood uh, exactly how that works, but it's something worth giving it a shot. And one thing to keep in mind, certain medications you have to be careful when you take grapefruit with it. It can it can actually inhibit the P450 enzyme of the liver which is what causes the breakdown of certain drugs uh, so you want to be careful if you take this with any kind of medications I'd probably take it away from the medications okay back to hydration water carries oxygen oxygen feeds red blood cells um, this is why people a lot of people don't do like the, the, can't, the altitude type tanks to where oh, yeah. put your body in a low oxygen environment to boost EPO red blood cell production a lot of bikers and stuff like that will do it. Your body will increase the amount of red blood cells because it's deprived of oxygen. So it's going to do that to get more oxygen. So if you're dehydrated, you don't have as much oxygen available for those red blood cells. So that's very, very important. And this is a, another thing. The guys that use the elevation masks, a lot of MMA fighters will do this. If you're using steroids, it's probably not a good idea because your levels are probably already high to begin with. And you may elevate them even further. So, uh, I, you know, if you're using steroids, just be conscious of what you're doing as far as your red blood cells, where they're at. Some guys may have no issues at all. Others will. But if it gets too high, it will actually hurt your endurance, hurt your performance. And you will know if it gets to the point where it's really, really thick because you'll be huffing and puffing between sets. It just, you'll, you'll, you'll just really feel winded. Like, it's just hard to do anything. Especially whenever they pull water, too. <clears throat> yeah, yep. So, you know, don't use that as an indicator. Get your blood test done so you know, because sometimes it can be high and you won't know. Um, next thing, um, if, you're, if you know you're elevated and you typically run elevated, it's a good idea to take a baby aspirin. Before bed would probably be your best bet. Most heart attacks occur in the morning, so you know, having it in your system can help keep your blood a little thinner, along with fish oil. Fish oil is supposedly it will even thin your blood more than a baby aspirin will. And that's something that if you're taking anabolic steroids or testosterone replacement, you should be doing anyway because it'll help keep your, your good cholesterol, your HDL, higher, which is one of the issues with running steroids. It typically lowers your HDL and raises your LDL. So it's a good idea to take fish oil. I typically take six to eight grams a day. Uh, that's you know a little bit on the higher side, but uh, you know it works for me. Yeah, they're anticoagulants, aren't they? They help keep the red blood cells from sticking together. Exactly. It works kind of like the baby aspirin. Mm -hmm. um, and baby aspirin also has other things that it does. You know, it can help prevent colon cancer, supposedly. There's a, there's a bunch of other benefits to taking it, you know, as, as long as it's just a baby aspirin. If you do more than that, then it, you, know, you could have other issues. Uh, yeah. and then another thing would be cardio. Yes. I mean, your oxygen efficiency. The more efficient you can make your body's own red blood cells at using that oxygen, the less that's going to have to produce because it's making more use of what you already have. So if you're doing a lot of cardio, you got your oxygen efficiency up, your wind, as people call it, you're going to use a lot less oxygen. Yeah, I've seen this actually with guys. When they're doing cardio, their levels will come down. Uh, so, you know, definitely... Uh, a very useful tool and it's good for your heart, it's good for your, your blood pressure, everything overall. So for your overall health, cardio is definitely good. Even if you're trying to put on size, you know, a little bit of cardio is not going to hurt you as long as you do it the right way. Um, I mean, that pretty much covers everything, I think, mm -hmm. as far as the ways to mitigate the side effects and help treat it. So Yeah, I mean, those are simple tools that you can implement that could probably save you some time. Yeah, definitely very important. A lot of guys overlook this. A lot of young guys that are running steroids don't even think about this stuff. It's probably one of the most dangerous things when it comes to steroids. It can it can creep up on you over time, and you have no idea until it hits you. And you know that's going to put you at risk for heart attack, stroke. This is pretty much why you hear all those you know testosterone is dangerous type of things from the. Uh, you know, when FDA is doing these different studies and, you know, they're trying to say that, you know, testosterone replacement could be dangerous. This is kind of what they're talking about. This is what causes a lot of the risk with testosterone. If you keep a good eye on this, you can prevent a lot of that risk. So it's just something to be aware of and uh, pretty much for anybody that's using anything, running any kind of cycle at all when it comes to anabolics. Uh, yeah, I mean, that should... I think that's Get about everybody it. covered pretty well. Yeah, I think we went over it pretty good. So uh, we're probably going to touch on this again in the future on our podcast, Anabolic Cartel Podcast. 
we're working pretty hard on that. Uh, we're going to have a couple new episodes coming soon. And we're also thinking about maybe putting out a magazine, uh, which would be like uh, maybe quarterly, which we're going to do like, you know, performance enhancing drug, uh, you know, talk as far as you know, ways to prevent any issues, uh, harm reduction, pretty much the, the stuff that you'd see, you know, like the old books, you know, back in the day, the muscular developments used to have a lot of good articles. And now you're getting less and less of that. So yeah, like Dave Palumbo's Q and A, he just answered directly out. Yeah, there's a lot of things you know that they used to talk about that they don't anymore, and uh, we feel like now it's more important than ever since access to anabolics is uh, at a peak, I, I believe. You know, because of the internet and everything. So uh, that and everybody's doing it. It seems like yeah, we just want to put out you know as much information as possible. Uh, of course, it's not medical advice. You know, don't do anything we say. Uh, we're not doctors of any kind. We're not telling you what to do. Uh, we're just kind of giving you our opinion, talking from our experiences, uh, trying to help any way we can. So uh, keep an eye out for the podcast, Anabolic Cartel Podcast. We have a five, or what, six episodes up mm-hmm. now and uh, more coming. So uh, And keep a lookout for the magazine, and we'll be talking more about that as it becomes more of a reality. So until then, we'll see you soon. Get your bloods done. Take care.